uh, Representative Adams of North Carolina. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, gentlelady for yielding and for her great work. Madam Speaker, uh, I rise today to address the hunger crisis in our communities and in our schools. Millions of children will go hungry on June 30th, just two weeks from now, if we fail to act. And let me say that again for anyone who may not have heard me. Millions of children will go hungry on June 30th if we do not act. I ask unanimous consent, Madam Speaker, to enter into the record an article from the Charlotte Observer outlining how the children in my district will be affected. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. At the beginning of the pandemic, this body authorized waivers to help make it easier for schools to offer meals to kids, and we gave access to healthy, nutritious foods to 10 million more school-aged children because finding reliable food sources became a problem. In case my Republican friends need a reminder, President Trump signed that legislation into law. And even as the pandemic continues and food prices are on the rise, these waivers are set to expire at the end of the month. As a 40-year educator, I know that hunger has been a crisis in our schools and our communities since long before the pandemic. That's also why when I came to Congress, I founded the Adams Hunger Initiative to help coordinate the response to the hunger crisis in my community and why hunger has been one of my top priority issues in Congress. In my home state of North Carolina, food insecurity has been a tragic fact of life for our kids and our students. In fact, I just heard from members of the North Carolina PTA today about their ever-present present concerns about food insecurity and, and how it will impact our students. In 2018, 441,000 North Carolina children participated in SNAP, and 207,351 residents participated in the Women, Infants, or Children's Program, or WIC. In 2019, 92,010 students participated in the Summer Food Service Program. Almost 100,000 students needed help from their school, so they didn't go hungry. And again, that was before the pandemic. In Charlotte, the hunger crisis led at least 24 elementary, middle, and high schools in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg School District to open food pantries to serve students in need during summer breaks and the vacation. For example, at Windsor Park Elementary in East Charlotte, members of the Windsor Community Neighborhood Association donate food to keep the shelves stocked for scores of food insecure and, and housing insecure uh, children. In West Charlotte, University Park Creative Arts School is restocked on a regular basis by Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, and thanks to local donors, it has a refrigerator and a large freezer to offer diverse food options for students and families. The need is real, and it's staring us in the face. It's also important to note that these two schools, along with 66 other local schools that will fall into the community eligibility provision, will still be able to offer meals and food to students at the same levels of service as the past two years. However, approximately 114 of our district schools are not eligible for that provision, meaning that, that access to summer nutrition will become a patchwork. And when students return at the end of the summer, fewer students will get the meals they need. Our choice is clear. We can choose to act, or we can let millions of children go hungry. As always, I'm standing with our students. Thank you, Congresswoman Omar and the Congressional Progressive Caucus for hosting this important special hour tonight. I yield back.